Okay, now the next exercise, again, a little bit of a warm up. We're just gonna have a little go over some enclosures, which we've, um, we've, done, so we've spent some time on before. Uh, so uh, we've done these before. So what we're doing, just to, just to um, clarify, is an enclosure is, is, um, is a way of um, decorating a note. It's an embellishment on a note. And it's a way to uh, embellish your melodies, your melodic, melodic shapes, so that you can... <laughs> Cat's just come in. I thought it was Joe, but it's the cat. Um, so the idea is that it's, it's to help you, help you generate some kind of melodic material. Um, and also what it does is it, cre it, it creates some chromaticism, which is always a good thing, right? Because the chromatic notes are, are where the spice comes from and where that kind of jazz flavor and sound comes from. Jazz musicians often use chromatic notes. They don't just play scale tones. If you, I mean, sometimes they do, but you know, they, look, they generally use some chromatic notes. It just gives a little bit more flavor to it. So this is a way of incorporating some chromaticism. And what you're doing is you're embellishing a strong note. So these work on strong notes. You can do it on any note, but they work well on strong notes. So what we're doing is we're going to take a D minor triad. So we're just going to play a triad. We won't, we won't, we won't put the enclosure on the seventh. We're just going root third, fifth. And um, so if we're playing a D minor chord, okay, and we've got the one, the three, and the five. One flat three and the five, okay. So they're just, it's just an arpeggio, an arpeggio of the triad. And then what we do for each of those arpeggio notes, we add a note above it and a note below it. And so it's like creates a sandwich where the, where the chord tone is kind of the filling. And the note above is a scale tone above, and the note below is a semitone below. So that's how come we get these slightly irregular uh, uh, patterns of, of intervals, which is really interesting there, okay? So we're going, so we're, we're still using the um, natural minor scale, which we just did. So if we use any, any notes above the chord tone, it will come from that scale. So you've got the B flat in there, right? And, but anything below the chord tone, the one we're, we're aiming for, will, will only be a semitone. And, that's, and then underneath I've written in the explanation, A is above, B is below, and then the number is the, is the chord tone, okay? So what we get is one, uh, one and two, three and four. Three and four and. Is it making sense? And. Three and four and. So it's basically tension and release. I'm creating some tension by hitting a sort of strange note and then I land on the chord tone to resolve that tension. Okay, so, and then, and then we just do the same thing now, but if you look at the numbers, we're going down the triad like that, starting on the third. So one and two and three and four and. Three and four and. As you start getting into these you'll realize there's loads of combinations of this you can do we're still on the just we're just playing a one triad but we can find all these different ways and to me I think the kind of process is very similar to sort of almost like baroque music where they used to embellish and uh, and, and, and ornament a lot of note a lot of uh, music then had a lot of ornamentation to it um, so the next one down what we're doing is we're going above so the so the triad is starting on the third going up to the fifth, going up to the one. And then we're ornamenting that by going above it, and then we hit the chord tone, and then we go below it, and then we land on the chord tone again. So we're playing the chord tone twice here. Oh, sorry. Yeah, and, now and that's quite nice, because you've got a four note grouping there. And that can, so you get these strings of quavers, which are quite common in jazz. You hear that a lot. Three and four and so I'm going a bit too quick, right? One and two and three and four and three and four and three and four and three and 
and four round. And then of course, you know, like don't just play this, you should then start messing about with it, okay? You know, you know, just sort of try and jump around. So use the same embellishment. See what I'm doing? I'm just jumping around the arpeggio there. I'm not necessarily just playing that. And so again, this is, comes back to knowing the theory and knowing the numbers, as opposed to just sight reading the notes, yeah? So some of you are very good sight readers, but I would urge you to, to not, not just read it. Try to think and, and, and play it without looking, basically. And then you've got to use the numbers and you've got to use the, the harmony and the theory. Okay, last one, so same process. Uh, so we're, we're going, we're basically going down the arpeggio from the root to the fifth to the minor third, and we're going above on it, below on it. Yeah, got that. And these are great to gen. Like I say, you're just generating material. Now, where these work very well, like so, it's 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 very similar process to the scale patterns. So these both of these method, um, both both of these these kind of um, concepts work well when you get static harmony. So if you get one chord for like a bunch of bars, yeah, then, then things like this work really well because it's a great way of you filling in all that space on, on one chord Yeah, because the harmony's not changed. Everything we've played, including all those scale patterns and all those enclosures, all of that, everything we've done is just a D minor chord. That's it. You can play all that over D minor. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah.